this is Finney from Death and the Creatures here. Um, just at Beehive Rehearsal Studios in Manchester. Um, thought I'd do a quick video just to uh, take you through my live setup, show you what everything is and what everything does. So the first thing you probably notice is this uh, keyboard. It's a Novation SL61 Mark II MIDI controller. Uh, lots of keys, lots of buttons. Um, I've also got a Native Instruments Core 2 MIDI controller as well. Um, now these two things by themselves don't actually make any sound. Um, I've got them hooked up to my MacBook, which is running a program called Ableton Live. Out of the MacBook, uh, everything goes into this, which is a Motu 8 Pre recording interface. Um, now the reason I use this is because it's got two separate outputs. Uh, on the back, I've got an output which goes over to the PA. Um, and on the front, I've got an output which goes to a wireless transmitter. Uh, each one of us has got here we go, each one of us has got a wireless receiver with headphones and that goes in our back pocket for on stage. So that's why we always wear headphones and look stupid. Because we don't have a drummer in our band, uh, we have to have a click running from Ableton uh, so that everybody knows what time they're coming in, uh, when all the beats are going to be triggered, all that kind of thing. Uh, along the top, I've got all the different instruments and down the side I've split the songs up into individual elements. So for example I've got a piano on track one, um, synth on track two, so on and so forth. And to you know, activate the different tracks, uh, these buttons along the bottom do that. Each one's got a quick mute button so that if anything gets out of hand, so say for example it just cuts it straight away. Um, each one's got its own individual volume control as well, which is quite quite handy. So if anything gets too loud, or say for example, um, there's been a few times when the beats have been quite quiet on stage, so Kez just said to me, turn the beats up, so turn the beats up. Simple as that. Um, well, it's quite an expansive project really. At the top you've got obviously the intro to the set which can change depending on where we're playing. Uh, depends what, what suits the mood really. Um, and then you've got all the different songs, so that's Find in Flight. Um, Save you this town, When the Sounds Fall, It's Over Now, Empty Sky. And each song has been split into the individual elements. So, say for example, if we take the verse from Finding Flight, you can see that there's a synth trigger to play on that bit. Now, obviously the main thing I do when I play live is the piano, so... All that kind of thing, I do the piano playing live, but at the same time I'm also triggering off all of these different sections of the song. Um, and to do that, these two buttons let me go up and down, so I'll show you that now. So I'm going up and down so I can choose which bit of the song I want to trigger off. Um, so as well as those, these two also do the same as well. So these go up and down, like so. Um, now this one will trigger that scene, and that one will stop anything that's playing. Same on here, play and stop. Now the reason I've got it on both sides is because I'm playing the piano at the same time, um, sometimes my left hand, that one, Sometimes my left hand's going to be free, sometimes my right hand's going to be free. I need to be able to get to that in, in a split second and trigger off the next section. Um, otherwise the chorus isn't going to come in, for example, or the verse isn't going to come in. So it's just handy having one on either side of the keyboard. So it just gives you more options, really. Now some of you have noticed from our songs that the drums have got quite a lot of glitchy effects on them. Um, you can actually see the effects on Ableton there that I've used. So I've got a uh, beat repeat function, um, I've got a ping pong delay set up, a grain delay which I use for pitch shifting the drums, uh, flanger, and an EQ. 
and to top it all off I've put a compressor on there just to keep it nice and tidy. Um, all of these effects can be controlled from the keyboard. Uh, at no point do I actually have to touch the Mac at all. So yeah, this control um, controls the filter on the drums on the EQ. So I'll show you that now. This one here, uh, this is left hand. I use this quite a lot on intros, uh, specifically on Save You This Town. When we start off, I tend to have it on quite low and then bring it up as the song comes in. Um, now I'll show you that on here, so if we scroll along. So I'll just move that control again, and you can see that's controlling the filter there, which is quite handy. Also, these little buttons here are the controls for the glitch. Now, glitch is one of the main effects that we use on the drums in Death and the Creatures. Um, it's, you know, some people say it's our signature sound. Um, this button on the bottom switches it on and off. So if I want to get rid of glitch completely, just press it and it goes off. Okay, let's leave it switched on for now. If I want to freeze the glitch so that it just sort of repeats infinitely, this button on the top. So, do that. Sorted. Um, and these two buttons here control the time of the glitch. So this one, the more of this I've got set up, then the bigger the segments of glitch will be. And this one controls how long they go on for. This one is the delay, so switch it on at the bottom again, and the more I turn this up, the more delay comes into the track, uh, specifically on the drums. This one is the pitch. I've got this set to maximum because I don't want this to come in halfway through and it's going to be like two octaves lower than normal, so I always set it to maximum and then just give it a quick shift down. Uh, this is a flange effect. Um, I can control how much goes into the mix there. This is a sort of a temporary glitch, like this one you have to hold it down and when you do it'll just sort of give it a nice little artifacty sound. This one's a toggle switch and it sends the drums to a reverb for, uh, well until, until long as it's switched off. So, for example,
I've also got these trigger pads set up to control the cymbals. So quite often you'll see me doing the piano and then I'll just hit one of them quite hard out of nowhere. Uh, that triggers a cymbal, it's sort of like a, I'll do one now, sort of like a, a transition-y sound kind of thing. It just brings in the choruses easier, brings out the verses as well. Um, and that's about it as far as the keyboards are concerned. Um, there are a lot more complicated things on here, but it's, it's just technical stuff like master volume, headphone volume, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest. Um, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, uh, send me a tweet or send the band a tweet. It's, it's only ever me that uses it though, so I'll reply. Uh, at DTC Band Official. Um, send us an email. Uh, get in contact on Facebook, just any questions, just you know, use, the, use the comments as well, post a comment below. Um, our website www.deafenthecreatures.com, check us out um, and you can hear all of this in action. Thank you for watching. Oh,